Hey guys, what's up? Jason here from Critical Miss, and I'm assuming that since you clicked this video, you're wanting to create your own mod for Software Inc. So I'm just going to get straight into it. Before I do, uh, let's just go over what you'll need. Software Inc, installed, and literally any text editor at all. It's that simple. I am using Sublime Text 2. For me, it makes it a lot easier, but you could just even use Notepad for this if that's what you've got. So let's get into it. Today we're adding a new software and I'm going to be explaining what I'm doing as I go along. We're just going to be doing the basic outline and covering what you'll need to add software this time and we'll add uh, companies and scenarios and all that good stuff in future videos. If you are making your own mod, why don't you try to keep up with the video? So the very first thing we need to do is tell the game that this is a new software type. So add some open and closed software type tags to the top and bottom of the document. Nice and simple. Remember to close your tags. These can be really tricky to spot once we have everything we need in here, and there's gonna be a lot, so make sure that you get into the habit of closing them before you move on to the next one. So, next, we're gonna give it a name. There we go. Uh, since I'm just doing a tutorial, I'm gonna call mine tutorial, but you can pick whatever you like. Okay, cool. So next we're going to define the category, and this is what the software will appear as in the newspaper reviews. Uh, for example, uh, your company is taking this category to new heights. And like when you're making a game, it says gaming. If you're making uh, an operating system, it says uh, computers. I don't know, I've not actually never made an operating system. Uh, but yeah, uh, since I'm making tutorial software, I'll just put tutorials. There we go, fantastic. Next, we want to add a hint that appears whenever you hover over the software type. Uh, this is done with the description tag. There we go. What you put between these will appear when you hover over your software. I'm gonna write, this is a tooltip. This is a tooltip. And I'll show you in game when we're done. We should also decide when the software will unlock. Uh, I'm going to set the date to 1980, but if your software should come out later than that, we'll then change this accordingly. If you're keeping up, well done, we're making good progress and you will be a master in no time. The next tag is a tricky one to explain. Random defines how many of your consumer reach might buy or ignore your software, or rather, how much your sales will vary. When a product is released, a random number is chosen and weighted against your sales. For example, the default for games is 0.5, since you can never really rely on good sales for a game. Uh, for operating systems, it's 0, because operating systems are always in demand and are necessary for a computer to work, so sales won't vary that much. For balancing, I always just put this at 0.3, meaning 30% of the consumer reach could choose to ignore it, or might not. I know, it's odd. Let's, uh, let's move on. So you may have noticed I've, I've put a little bit of space between these. Uh, it is an imperative, but it does help to keep it looking nice and tidy, and I don't want to get lost within my own file. So, next we need to let the game know if it should be OS specific or not. If it should be dependent on an operating system. So the tag is OS specific. Uh, you can use your own judgment here, but a good rule of thumb is that unless you're adding an operating system, this should be uh, true. But I'm gonna set mine to false, because I'm a fucking rebel. The one client tag is used for the contract system, but it doesn't currently work as expected. So there's one client. Uh, so this should be set to false as well, just to avoid breaking anything. Uh, the next is the in-house tag. There we go. Which tells the game if the software can be kept in-house and not released. Uh, this makes sense for game engines, if you make a fantastic game engine or something, but it doesn't make sense for tutorials, so I'll set this to false as well. Now, the name generator tag, um, this is what uh, AI companies use to uh, obviously generate the name for this software, but since we're not adding an AI software in AI company in this time, uh, we're just gonna steal the operating system for now. So that's OS, I'm gonna put OS between these tags. Um, so if I hit name while I'm developing the software, it'll just give me the name of an operating system and we'll add a name generator and an AI company in the next video. So, let's get started on the good stuff. We're gonna add a category into our software. For example, operating system has computer, phone, and console categories. So create an open categories tag. There we go, like we did with software type. Cool. I'm only gonna add one category to my software, but you can add as many as you like. So, inside the categories tag, we're gonna open a new category tag, but before we finish that, we're gonna give it a name. And we're going to do that before we close the tag. And mine is going to be called uh, Software Inc. 
because I'm making tutorials for Software Inc. Nice and simple. Uh, and make sure that the uh, name is in quotation marks as well, or you'll break something. So let's define it. The first thing we're going to add is another tooltip. So I'm going to put the description tag, and then I'm going to write, this is our tooltip too. Right, very cool. I'm, uh, I'm going to try and do my best to cut out all of the keyboard taps. I'm not making any promises. <laughs> so second is the popularity tag. And this will define uh, how many people buy your software. Your consumer reach is based on the amount of people who use your dependent software. And if the popularity is set to one, everyone in your consumer reach will want it. I'm going to set this to 0 0.2. The retention tag. There we go. Defines how long people will use your software for and should be a value between 0 and 1, not including 1. Uh, the default for operating system is 0 0.9 and the default for an RPG game is 0 0.7. That's the only point of reference we're given. I'm not sure how long that is in game. But again, I'm going to put this at 0 0.2. And remember, we can always tweak these later to fit the mod better. So don't worry if you're not entirely sure right now. So, the... Uh, oof, what's that? The timescale tag lets the game know, there we go, lets the game know whether uh, the development time should be changed for this category. Set it to 1 and it'll take the same amount of time as all of the selected features. 0 0.5 will be half the time. I generally just set this to 1 and leave it, uh, but you can change this if you have a category that should be faster than other ones. Like for example, the phone category in operating systems is faster than the console category. There we go. So, next up is the iterative tag, which defines how likely the AI companies are to develop the software. Iterative. Uh, since we've not added any AI companies, I'm just going to put a 1, and we'll get around to this in the next video. There we go. So, that is the only category that I'm going to be adding to my software, but if you want to add more, you can just repeat the process. Make sure to close the category tag and the categories tag. There we go. So, we'll move on to the features, and first... I'm going to open the feature tag, like that, eat features, sorry. Um, and we're just going to go over a very basic feature and talk about what each tag means. So once you've created your open feature tag there, we're going to make our first feature forced, meaning that this one will always be selected unless something after it is selected. So to do this, we're going to open the tag, and then the same way that we did the category, um, we're going to define whether or not it should be forced or from or vital and things like that. So we're going to make this one forced. Okay, cool. So now that one will always be selected unless something that comes from it is selected. Cool, let's give it a name. Uh, name, there we go. And what am I doing right now? I'm recording my desktop. Cool beans. Right, another tooltip. Description. This is also a tooltip. Cool beans. Right, so the dev time tag defines how long it will take to develop this feature. I'll set this to one, meaning one month. Okay, let's go over the next three tags real quick. Innovation, usability, and stability. Innovation controls how long your customers will stay in, how long your content will stay interesting to customers, sorry. Usability controls how well your customers will like the product, and stability controls bugs and how much skill your employees will gain from working on the feature. Uh, once these are loaded into the game, they're normalized, meaning you could set the first one to 1, second to 2, and third to 3, and it will result in 1 out of 5, 2 out of 5, 3 out of 5. Does that make sense? I try to keep these around 10 in total for each feature, so by, re by recording my desktop, I'm not being extremely innovative. So under innovation, I'll just set that to 1. Yeah. However, it is extremely helpful to you, the viewer, compared to just an audio track. So for usability... I'll set that to 6. And since I'm not learning a whole bunch from doing this, I'll set the stability to 3. Nice little use of the game logic there. So, the next tag we'll add is code art. Now this sets the balance between programmers and artists required for the feature. If this is set to 1, it'll need just code. 0 0.5, it'll need half code, half art. Set to 0, all art. Nice and simple. I'm going to set this to 0 0.75 because I like to be an awkward little shit. Okay, we're going to add a dependency now, which means our dependent software must have this feature. We're going to add dependency, a little space there, and since there's no way you could view this without some sort of interface, the dependency for record desktop will be an operating system, software operating system, with a GUI. 
Okay, cool. So that one's done. We'll close that feature tag and we're gonna... Sorry, I'm getting over the flu. I've got weird sneezes. <coughs> <coughs> okay, so we're gonna add another feature, uh, this time one that stems from recording desktop. So it's gonna be exactly the same, but with one small change. Uh, feature equal, and uh, this time instead of adding forced equals true, we're gonna add uh, from equals record desktop. Okay, so now that should come with a little arrow from record desktop. So let's give it a name. Oh, edit in Premiere, because that's what I'm gonna do next. Uh, description. Even more tooltips. Oh dear, I've missed something. Damn it, I got almost all the way through the video as well. <laughs> right, okay. Dev time one. Innovation one. Usability six. Yeah, I'll just copy it. I'll just copy it. Stability three. Uh, code art. That's like this is 0 0.5 actually. Dependency. Now we're going to keep the same dependency because otherwise it would suddenly no longer need the GUI. Okay, very cool. And now I'm just going to very quickly add one more feature to my software that doesn't need, uh, that isn't forced and isn't from anything. And that's going to be record audio to make sure that there is an audio track for this. Okay, so now all we need to do is add this into our game. So if you bought it through Steam like I did, you just need to right click, go to properties, local files, hit browse local files. And inside here, you'll see there's a folder called mods. So this is where we're gonna save it. The first folder needs to be called, oh, let's go inside mods first. First folder is just what your game, what your mod will appear as in game. So we call this tutorial mod. And then I'm going to make a new folder and I'm going to call it software types. There we go. Nice and simple. Save it in there. And Bob is your teapot. Let's give this a launch and see if it worked. Yes. You know if it didn't because so that big mass message will appear. There we go. Record desktop operating system GUI. But tutorial is not operating system dependent. I see. Oh, right, yeah. See, that's a mistake that I made. There we go. Let's, uh, let's try that again. <laughs> there we go. Super duper mega easy. Let's toggle tutorial mod. Yep. Hit start game. I don't need to change any of this since it unlocks in 1980 anyway. Bada bing, bada boom. Ding, dong. Tutorial mod. This is a tooltip. Software Inc. Uh, this is a tooltip too. This is also a tooltip. This too is a tooltip. Yada yada blah blah blah. Very cool. So that all works exactly as we wanted it to. And um, here we go. Sorted. Fantastic. Let's get this developed. So there we go. Now you know how to add in your own software types to Software Inc. Next time we'll cover adding in companies, uh, name generators and scenarios. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content. Thank you. Bye bye.